Right, so in an effort to get down with the kids, I've bought myself some LEDs. No, actually, we can't start the video off that way because I've already lied. Um, I stole those off last year's Christmas tree. I have got some LEDs. I bought a light bulb. This will make what I have to say far more important and far more realistic than if I was sat, as usual, in my pigsty of a garage. Hmm. I would also like to point out I have a secret weapon. Hamish, come here. Come here. Hamish, come here. Come here, Papa. Come here, Papa. Hamish, what's wrong, Dad? This is my secret weapon. Hamish, you're on camera. You're on camera, darling. So, now that we've got the studio set up, we have a cute puppy. If Hamish, if we started a channel for, me, for you, we'd probably have a millions of subscribers rather than the five people who tune into my channel. But anyway, we're not here to talk about puppies. We're here to talk about something far more exciting because see you in a minute darling today's a good day because these arrived now if we flip back to my HDO versus Skyzone or 3 you'll remember that I bought the HDOs and I bought the Sky or 3 and I like the Sky or 3 better than the HDOs in every single way bar one which is basically when you're flying in really tricky lighting conditions the OLED displays on the HDOs outshone the much bigger displays on the Sky or 3 which were 42 um, degrees field, field of view and at the time in the comments I said if I could put the HDOs OLED screens, screens in the Skyzone or 3s I would have my perfect goggle and it happened so Skyzone have made a Sky O3 with OLED displays so my dreams have come true so let's have a look and see what they're like right so I've taken the top box off and the first thing to note is we get a little sort of warranty card um, Thank you for supporting Skyzone followers on Facebook to get better customer service. And we have a contact person who's John. And we've got an address and a phone number. Always a good start if you have a problem. John, I'm guessing, is not called John. But the Chinese have a habit of giving themselves Western names and I'm not really sure why that is. Why they can't just use their own names and if we if we mess around and can't pronounce them just tell us how to do that so we get a nice little destruction manual and everything is really nicely packaged so much so that I can hardly get them out so we get two things you get a little box which has the usual suspects in it so we've got video wires, a couple of these crap duck antennas that people still give us all the time, various different connectors, we've got a barrel connector with an XT60 on the other side because this guy can use the usual 2 to 6S, and we've got, I don't actually know what that is, but various wires, most of which we'll never ever look at again. And then in the other box we have, hopefully, the goggles. So if we just open this up, and I haven't actually played with these. So, mine are the Rose Gold version, or it's called Rose Gold on Bangabs website. Although on the box, it calls them something different. Um, it calls them super glossy metallic black. 
But I don't know how well it will come across on here, but you can see they're basically a really deep, sort of black, burgundy, metallic colour. We get a couple of foam face plates, or should I say, um, pretend leather face plates. Get a couple of Velcro attaches, and then we get the goggles themselves, which somewhat unusually come with two face plates. Right, so I've just taken the face plate off the goggles, and you can see we've got two of them. And they're basically exactly the same except for this lip. So if you see, this guy has this protrusion on either side, sort of extra lip, whereas this guy doesn't. And basically that's the thing that was fixed on the Sky or 3 following the reviews from Westerners who found that the faceplate was really uncomfortable. On the original Sky or 3s they added in like a rubber bit which you could stick to the goggle itself. Um, so they've clearly just updated the faceplate. Um, so you've got two faceplates depending on the shape of your head. You've got your Western faceplate and you've got your Asian faceplate I suppose you could call it. Right, so I plugged them in and switch them on with its lovely fan and you probably won't be able to see this particularly well in fact you can't see it really but the LED basically changes colour does a million different things should that float your boat and without wanting to ruin tomorrow's testing in the field the displays are a million times better than the HDOs, even just looking around my garage. Um, they're sharper, crisper, the colours are brighter, and um, they just seem like a different league. But we'll have a look tomorrow when I actually flight test them and see what they're like. So just to finish off this sort of initial overlook of the goggle. The case is slightly different than the O3s, as in the power input is at the bottom and that's a really stiff um, jack so you don't have to worry about it falling out um, we've got the tracker head tracker um, outputs and of course this guy has built-in head tracking never used it myself but my brother uses it on his fixed wings he sort of flies spitfires and his little guy sat inside sort of looks around with a camera strapped to his head um, with the head tracking we've obviously got HDMI in we've got AV in AV out, uh, headphone sockets, USB, and we've got the SD card slot here, which unlike the Fat Sharks, you don't need your missus's um, fingernails to get out. So, first impressions are wow. Now, before we get to the flight footage, there's something I want to just quickly talk about. Because the one comment that will constantly keep coming up about these goggles is the fact that they don't have the option to put in a separate module. Now, up until recently that was never a big issue because one module was pretty much the same as another regardless of what people said. And obviously Rapid Fire somewhat changed that. And what Rapid Fire does is essentially take the images from both antennas and almost sort of splice them all together in a in layman's terms which gives you less breakup and in my testing using a patch antenna and a normal uh, pagoda antenna etc the differences between uh, rapid fire and a standard module are relatively small you know you get less flicker with rapid fire than you do a standard module but you can't really fly anywhere that you wouldn't be able to do with a standard module. Where I find rapid fire really shines is when you're using it with two omni antennas, so two pagoda antennas or something like that. Um, it seems to work really, really well 
they're sort of flying through and behind trees and you can kind of go all the way around yourself and stuff like that so rapid fire is a better module um so for me i'm sold already but let's get to the juicy bits which are the screens right so this is my first flight using the sky zones with their own built-in diversity i'm using a patch antenna and an omni antenna and the noise that you're seeing in the dvr is simply the quad itself um, it's been bashed around a million times and uh, has a bit of noise these days and the first impressions flying this which won't come across on the dvr itself is it's just amazing and the difference is just amazing even using a camera and in this case we're using a predator v3 um, which isn't known for its good picture quality it's known for its quick light changes the the difference is night and day the image is so bright and i've only i've only got this on level three of ten and i've made no changes to the brightness the contrast or anything else i'm simply flying it out of the box and the the colors are just beautiful um you can see all the, the shadows in within the trees everything is uh you know the blacks are really black the whites are really white it just looks like a proper display um but as i said this isn't the camera to test it out at this point i'm wishing i still had an eagle in terms of reception um i've never flown this spot before i don't know it well there are telephone wires as you can see going across or power wires one of the two um, but I'm having no trouble, um, a minimal break up here. Um, and I don't even sort of notice this sort of break up when I'm flying. Um, I, it only really gets sort of difficult when you, you, you know, you lose picture entirely. So at this point, obviously I'm in a clear open area. Um, so I shouldn't really be getting any break up, but there's nothing, um, that concerns me. And this is a sort of flying that, um, that I do quite often in and around trees. Um, obviously we've got the odd flicker. But I'm just sort of enjoying the fact that the sky is a beautiful blue and the, you know, the, the corn is, um, is a beautiful green. Everything just seems much sharper um, and the contrast is just incredible. So my next flight, so I decided to get out my little Squirt V2, which has a broken arm um, and getting quite a bit of jello because of that. Um, but this is using a Cadex Rattel, um, which is obviously a much prettier picture than the Foxier Predator. And even with the jello and the video noise that you can see here, you can see how beautiful the picture actually is. It's just stunning. Now this quad has a problem, as in it has really, really poor RF performance, um, either due to the VTX, which is a TBS... Um, nano um, set to I think 100 milliwatts and I noticed straight away that my camera is a little bit out of focus um, which I've never really noticed that much before um, but you can just see even though this picture um, you know isn't as good as what I'm seeing in the goggles it's like watching a looking at a HD feed it's just so much better than what we've had in the past before that it's it's night and day and I just kind of want to mooch around and look at the colours because they're, they're so beautiful. Now, one thing to mention is um, because this has really poor RF performance on this quad, this is the one where I'm really sort of just mooching around seeing how much breakup I get. Um, because in a minute I switch to a rapid fire on this on this set of goggles and I'll talk a little bit later about how I do that I'm running 100 milliwatts and for whatever reason either the antenna is damaged or whatever but I always get poor um, reception on this quad regardless of what module I'm using one thing to mention is that the Skyzone DVR is a million times better than the Fat Shark one. Even though this isn't an accurate representation of the quality of the screen, 
I haven't bothered trying to sort of record the screen directly because this shows the DVR shows it better. The Skyzone DVR on the Sky O3 line, so the not the original Sky O3, the, the Sky O3S, and the Sky O3O, which is the one that we're testing here, have a much better DVR, which um, uses the H.264 encoding format. And the difference between that and the Fact Shark DVR is night and day. The Fact Shark is such so poor quality. Um, the Sky Zone is head and shoulders above it. The Sky Zone also have a has a number of nifty features. I'm going to link the original Sky O3 um, review below um, in the description of this video because everything that I said in that video applies to this model as well. The OSD and all the rest of it is essentially the same, but it's had a few tweaks. So not only do we have additional options to change the OLED brightness and etc, but you've got a few additional features. The goggles themselves have a gyroscope in them and they will turn themselves off to protect the OLED displays after a timer that you can set and it comes by default at three minutes. Now there's been a few people complain that the goggles have turned off mid-flight because they're not moving the head. Now it's clearly not going to be a problem for me because I'm essentially Stevie Wonder when I fly, but if you're concerned about that, just turn that feature off and Skyzone are apparently releasing an update in about a week to fix it. Um, the other thing is that on some of the original Skyzones, although they will take 2 to 6S, the voltage could be slightly inaccurate. And on this particular, vol uh, on this particular module, not only can you um, choose your voltage in, whether it be 2 to 6S, but you can also calibrate the voltage as well so you know it's accurate. So here I am flying the Skyzone goggles with rapid fire and again we're in my rather wonky squirt and you can see on the upper left is the legacy OSD and I'll come on to that in a little while but I'm basically using rapid fire here in mode 1 with the lock on. So I'm using rapid fire with two Omni antennas and again the obviously the video noise you're seeing is from the quad itself not rapid fire and as you can see rapid fire works absolutely fine. Right, so I've just flown at a random spot because it seems a world of metal detector detectorist people have taken over as caravans and all sorts in my local spot. Um, and I've been flying the Sky R30 and I'd hoped to fly my HDOs but after about three and a half seconds um, another fat short battery case decided to die on me um, so you'll need to sort of see the link um, in the description if you want to look at um, rapid fire versus um, the skies on DVR and sorry the skies on DVR and um, RF signal what I've also done is rigged up a little rapid fire system which I can use with the Sky O2 and this is just a docking with the rapid fire stuck onto it um, and a little 3d printed case I made last night um, and this cable is a three and a half mil um, AV in cable and then obviously you've got a battery cable at the bottom which takes 2 to 4s and essentially all you do is plug the other end into the Sky Zones and you're using rapid fire a um, couple of downsides of using this system you won't have the rapid fire um, OSD signal strength on your screen which personally I find really annoying so good riddance um, on the DVR you'll see that I have got um, a sort of broken um, furious FPV OSD um, but I think I can turn that off with the mobile app so I'll put a note on that in the description um, but basically rapid fire just works exactly the same on this as when I'm using my HDOs. You can see I'm using its party trick which is just to use two Omni antennas rather than a patch 
um, this is how I tend to use mine because it sort of just gives you a good 360 degree relatively short range coverage um, and I prefer it than using a patch um, the sky zone is a normal diversity receiver it doesn't have that magic um, and you'll need to use a patch on it but using a patch I found the signal um, absolutely fine using this although of course you'll get far worse signal if you're flying behind yourself than you will do with this guy so rapid fire we all know what it's about it's a really good module it's better than the ones in this but the purpose of this video is to see if there's a workable alternative if you must have this and the answer to that is yes in terms of all these cables the simple thing that I'm going to do if I find myself using rapid fire a lot is simply to take the power lead for the sky zone goggles and I'm simply going to splice these two together and run them I'll put an extra connector on the end of this and I'll power both systems from one XT60 connector which should be fine and the only downside of using rapid fire with the sky zones is or should I say docking with the sky zones is you'll I get a lot of interference on this you can record on the sky zone DVR using this with rapid fire but you get a ton of interference on the DVR so it really kills the quality of the DVR albeit it's still absolutely fine to find your model etc you're just gonna get snow lines um, across it but obviously you can get a separate DVR for the dot king so I don't know if that will work or not but I have got one which will hope I'll hopefully get in the not too distant future and let you know about it um, so yeah in terms of the goggles compared to the HDOs there's no comparison putting the HDOs on even for the two seconds before the battery decided to die um, the HDOs are so dim in comparison the colours are sort of muted the blacks are grey the whites are sort of turgid grey whereas this guy it feels like you're looking at a proper OLED um, display you know the sort of thing that you'd expect to see in your tablet or your phone or something like this the difference is huge the difference between this and the fat shark display is bigger than the difference between you know I don't know a Dominator HD3 or the Sky R3s with the normal 42 inch screen and the HDL it's it's that big of a difference um, so for the price of them you'll very rarely hear me say this but if you're looking at a set of goggles just buy these and if you must have the fancy tech then get yourself one of these the, the features and the clarity of screening this for me far outweigh the benefits of this and my HDOs are essentially done um, they're a really expensive goggle that I'll link the description um, I'll link a description below actually um, where you can look at my Fat Shark HDO versus Sky or 3